Welcome to the Continuum Lab. This is the companion video for the Click DIY MIDI Ocarina. This video will help you understand how this instrument works, whether you made it using the Continuum Lab instrument kit, or maybe you downloaded the code from GitHub and sourced the components yourself, or maybe you even bought a finished one from me over at the ContinuumLab.com shop. Mind you, this is not a tutorial on how to actually make the instrument. That's in a separate video to which you will find a link down in the description. We're going to get into a few different aspects of this, specifically how to calibrate the click ocarina, how to play it, and uh, what the different options are that we can choose between on the instrument. So to get a handle on these things, we're going to dip our toes just a tiny bit into the code that makes it all work. And then finally, we'll look at some possible failure modes. So things that can go wrong, what problems they will cause, and uh, what we might be able to do to fix those problems. Let's get into it. Calibrating the click ocarina is very simple. Just like on all the instruments in the series, you simply press down the calibration button and hold it pressed while you activate all the sensors. This is the sequence. Press the button, wait for the LED on the teensy to switch on and off again. That's about a second if it's hidden away inside the instrument. Now activate all the sensors. Then release the button. Calibration is now complete, but hasn't been saved to memory yet. If you unplug the instrument, the calibration will be lost. The way to save it is to press the button three times in quick succession with no more than half a second for each press and no more than half a second between presses. After the third press, the LED on the teensy will blink three times, which confirms that the calibration has been saved. Keep in mind that both the capacitive sensors in the keys, as well as the analog breath sensor have a range to them. When you calibrate them, you define what part of that range will be used as you play. So a very slight touch on the keys, for example, at calibration, will mean that they will also activate easier when you play. This is not recommended, because if you leave the keys very sensitive in this manner, they also start becoming sensitive to noise. Better to go for a sort of medium pressure. This is even more important for the breath sensor. If you blow very hard in it at calibration, for example, it will also need a lot of pressure to activate the full range of output when you play. Okay, so what about actually playing? Well, the basics are very simple. You blow in the breath sensor, whatever kind you have on there, and then you define the output notes by applying different key combinations. I grabbed these ocarina fingerings off the internet and applied them in my code, although I substituted in some alternate combinations instead of the half-pressed keys, for simplicity's sake. Here's the diagram, and here's how that looks when played on the instrument. The second octave is produced by overblowing. This function is applied in the code after mapping the breath values to MIDI range, which kind of limits the sensitivity of each octave. But I did this just to keep everything nice and simple. Plus, that's pretty much how overblowing actually works anyway. Future versions of the code might change this, but it actually works nicely as is. Playing quickly, beautifully, or with any kind of fluency is entirely up to you. I'm a saxophonist myself, so I won't even pretend to be able to use this instrument to its full potential. Next, let's have a look at those options. The ocarina doesn't have many, so this will be quick. The default output of the click instruments goes to MIDI channel 1, but you can change that to channel 2 by just plugging a jumper into the breakout board on option pin 2. Or if you're not using the breakout, you need to connect the teensies pin 4 to ground with a jumper cable, for example. The only other option on here is to change the default volume control output from the breath sensor, which is continuous controller number 2, to continuous controller number 7, which is channel volume. This is useful if you're trying to use this instrument to play a synth that doesn't natively accept breath control, which is what CC number 2 is. This is selected by also inserting a jumper in the breakout board between analog pin 9 and its ground pin. 
The reason why this isn't done on one of the option pins is because this option is universal on all the click wind instruments and some of them already use all of the option pins for more important stuff. If you're not using the breakout then the click analog pin 9 corresponds to pin 24. So just connect that to ground. Both of these options are applied in the setup section of the code, so you'll need to reset the Teensy to make them work by unplugging and plugging back in. Finally, let's have a quick look at what can typically happen to make this instrument not work. I'll list a couple of examples, but of course this list is not exhaustive. If you encounter another problem, then please let me know down in the comments so that we can figure it out together and everyone can benefit. First, let's talk about the breath sensor. One thing that might happen is that you get a constant or intermittent low level output from the breath sensor, even when not blowing in it. This is normally caused by having the balloon membrane too loose, allowing it to move around. So in the case of this 3D printed sensor or this other handmade one, that would mean having a water balloon which is too large for the plastic disc inside it. Either get a smaller balloon or make a bigger disc. If you're working with this other kind of sensor setup, then you should be able to just tense the membrane up manually. Any other kind of loose components within the breath sensor setup which might allow movement can also cause this problem. Now the opposite problem might also occur. Having a membrane which is too tense will mean that you have to blow really hard in the sensor to get any output at all, which will give you less sensitivity even after calibrating. Simply adjust opposite to what I just said to fix this. If the breath sensor only outputs noise, then you might have the three cables plugged in in the wrong place or the wrong way around or in the wrong order. Make sure that you get them in the right place and that ground goes to ground and so on. About the keys, as I mentioned, calibrating these right is important. Now if they don't work properly after calibrating, then try adjusting how you calibrate. Apply more pressure or less to see if you can find the sweet spot. If one of the cables isn't properly connected or is damaged, then that's a problem that you won't be able to calibrate your way around. Depending on which key is failing, it might affect even key combinations that don't include that key. So it's not always obvious what's going on. A disconnected key, of course, won't calibrate properly either. So you might get a noisy output from it rather than no signal at all. Make sure you check all connections thoroughly, even changing a suspicious cable for a new one if nothing else works. DuPont cables can sometimes be damaged or even come faulty from the factory, either in the header or in the cable itself. And if you use my thumbtack method of key construction, then this will stretch the header out a bit, sometimes damaging it outright if you're not careful. Finally, if you're used to Arduino code, then you'll find a bunch of commented out serial print statements in the code for the Ocarina. Uh, uncommenting these will give you access to a whole lot of debugging info, which can help you solve many kinds of problems. I won't explain that any further in this video, but there will be some videos coming here on the channel, which dive deep into the code for all these instruments, so stay tuned for that. For now, you can uh, download the code from the link in the description and have a look at it yourself. The failure modes for all the click wind instruments are basically the same, or at least very much alike. But the Ocarina is an especially good place to learn how to recognize and fix some of these problems, because it has so few sensors to deal with. And like I said, if you encounter other difficulties in making this instrument work, then please let me know in the comments. And that's it for this companion video. I hope you have many fun and fruitful hours playing and experimenting with the Click Ocarina. If you're interested in buying one of these for yourself or for a geeky friend or family member, then you can do that over at continuumlab.com where I sell both various types of instruments as well as the Continuum Lab instrument kit itself. The complete kit comes with all of the sensor materials and components that you need to make this instrument as well as many others. And all of those instruments even come pre-programmed onto the microcontroller within the kit. So even complete beginners can get started making cool MIDI instruments with zero coding and simple techniques. You can find links to the build tutorial for the Click Ocarina as well as the other Click instruments down in the description. Take care until next time and I'll see you in the continuum.